Thank you for joining us, everybody. Tonight, we are um, Vintage Books Live with Eileen Garvin. And her novel is called The Music of Bees. And it's been a favorite at the store. Lots of people have asked for it. So we thought decided it'd be really fun to ask Eileen to come and chat with us tonight. So I'm actually going to start in a different place than I normally do. Um, I'll, I'll get to my standard opening question in a minute. But, but I'm really curious because something that I think is special about this book is it's located, you know, the, it takes place in the Columbia Gorge and you live in the Columbia Gorge. So for, for those people who aren't in this area, who come to this video through our YouTube page, can you just talk about the landscape and what makes it special to you and, and, you know, like painting a picture for somebody who maybe doesn't live around here or hasn't ever been there? Yes, the, the Columbia River Gorge, as as you know, because you live in the area, it is is a really magnificent place. And um, the easiest way to describe it is that, well, for people who don't who don't live in this region, uh, the Columbia River forms the boundary between the states of Washington and Oregon. And the Columbia River Gorge National Scenic Area is um, about, ooh, I used to have this memorized, I think it's about 70 miles long. It goes east-west along that river. And there are 13 towns located within it. Um, Hood River sits about an hour um, uh, in, in, into uh, to 60 miles inside of it. And we're between the um, two of the Cascade Peaks, Mount Hood to the south and Mount Adams to the north. And it's just it's just such a beautiful place. Um, the, the the gorge uh, factor of the gorge you have these very steep basalt cliffs that the river runs through and so you have amazing viewpoints um and then in the towns themselves hood river in particular is a, a an orchard town so that since about the turn of the 20th century it's been very heavily um, farmed for cherries pears and apples and so that's just this other lovely beautiful part that kind of slopes up toward the mountain so um really anywhere you look it's just it's really it's a breathtaking place and uh yeah, lucky right. yes. this region. yes I, it's gorgeous and i think one of the things for those who aren't in the area um both washington and oregon uh, washington's nickname is the evergreen state but that always makes me chuckle because i grew up in central washington which is east of the cascade range and you know the 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 lush rainy you know west side is is completely different you know Washington and Oregon on the east side are are very arid shrub step um, lots of agriculture lots of dryland wheat farming lots of orchard areas and stuff and one thing that I really love about the Columbia River Gorge is that you're going through the gorge but you're also going through the Cascades and so you're going from the west side which is lush and green and gets a lot more um, precipitation to the east side which is more dry and Hood River kind of sits right on the edge of that like just when you've like started to come down the east side so it it just sits in a really it's just really beautiful because it's still getting a little bit of that moisture from you know from the west you know from the ocean from the west side but it is on in on the dry land side. So you have all the agriculture, but you have, you know, the, the mountains are right there and it's just a really pretty spot. So um, so I will now ask you the question that I typically <laughs> open with, which is just to tell the story of this particular book, like how it came to be. Um, for some people, I know sometimes books are a long time in the making and sometimes it's a, oh, I had this idea and I just wrote it. And so I'm always curious to know each book sort of birth story? That's a great opening question. I love the way you put that. Um, yes, this, so the music of bees uh, started on a very particular day. And um, before I wrote this book, I, I, I like to tell people I don't have an MFA. I didn't take creative writing classes. I didn't go that route. So you don't have to, <laughs> that's not <laughs> that's not the only way to get there. I was yeah. a newspaper reporter and then a freelance writer and I wrote a memoir and personal essay prior to this. But the, the and those stories always came to me kind of like, oh, I get an idea and it would sort of, you know, bounce around in my head for a while. And this story really came out of nowhere. 
And what happened was this one specific day in 2016, I was driving south of town through the orchards on a spring night, very similar to the one um, in which the, where, where chapter one finds us, where Jacob Stevenson is out um, doing the same. And I, um, as we've just described, was just admiring the beauty of this lovely place and sort of spacing out. I was picking up some bees from a farmer um, down the road because my my hive had died and I was passed by a guy in a wheelchair with mohawk <laughs> and I was out on this country road with no bike lane and so I you know I noticed because whether it's a bicycle or another person I just I noticed the yeah, I, yeah. wheelchair I noticed mohawk you know how a lot of mohawks in Hood River and as we passed each other I thought oh I noticed him and then I had this experience that I had had before as a reporter and as a as a essay writer, where I got a sentence in my mind, just kind of like delivered yeah. into the inbox. And the sentence was the, what became the opening sentence of the story. Yeah. Yeah. That's how that started. That's awesome. And I do you have the book in front of you? I do. Yes. Will you read? Would you read the very like, let's see, because I was actually going to comment on the first the first sentence, which I love. Um, yeah, maybe like the first two or three sentences, if you could read that. Sure. Jacob Stevenson had the tallest mohawk in the history of Hood River Valley High School. Even before it was listed as an official yearbook record, he was pretty sure about it. In his senior photo, it was a blue-black masterpiece that flared up to a height of 16 and a half inches. Well, almost. It was more like 16 and three-eighths, but close enough to silence any quibblers. That's great. I love that that was what started the whole thing. That's really awesome. <laughs> and I, I guess that's a good segue to another question I had was like the central core. I think the central emotional core of this book is feels like it's found family, like finding your place in a community that that you know, find in one in in one character's place. Well, actually, not that's more than more than one character is finding your place after loss. You know, finding pe the people that are your that care about you and that you know that go out of their way to be part of your lives. And I was just curious if you could elaborate on that, like how, why that became important to you as as you crafted the story and and just you know kind of how that that became the the sort of the emotional core of the story. Sure. I, I just, I've always loved that. I it feels very relatable to me, I guess, just the, the found families. And when I realized that when Jacob appeared and I realized, you know, over the course of the, the first few days when I was writing that first chapter and thinking, okay, where's the story going? And I realized his predicament that he was this young, young man, born able-bodied, big plans, you know, blowing this town, he's going somewhere and all that has been arrested. And, um, and then putting him in this situation, like not, not a great living situation with his parents. And, and I, I, I you know, you're not conscious of these things at, at, at the time, but when people have asked me about that, I, I grew up in a big family and I am very close to um, my brothers and I, we're all, we're, there's five of us and we're all a year apart. And my brothers and I consequently were we uh, shared friends, you know, growing up. I always had a lot of male friends, extra brothers, and I still do. And I, Jacob was like a lot of the boys I grew up with that had that, you know, butting heads with their father and maybe their dad wasn't such a great dad. And so they left and moved in with somebody else and finished high school elsewhere. You know, that, that, that's, a, yeah. that's not an uncommon story. And so when I realized that that was what was going to happen with him, the rest, as the rest of it fell into place, it just, it, the way it, it, it worked out, they were ending up helping, helping each other. Um, yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I just, I just always love that story because I, I think it's, it's not, it's now it's not, um, now it's not um, uh, atypical. I'm thinking of one of the first movies I saw of this kind, like uh, What's Eating Gilbert Grape, that kind of mm -hmm. that, yeah. that yeah. aesthetic that you're just, your nuclear family isn't necessarily where you're going to find your home. And I just, I've always loved stories like that. So yeah. it felt yeah. fun to me to explore that idea. Yeah. And the other, another big theme that runs through this story, that sort of the, one of the 
sort of driving the main action. Um, you know, I think I, I would say that this is more character driven. Like I think the character development is, is the most sort of poignant and, but, but you do have this action in the story where the characters are dealing with big agribusiness that isn't very scrupulous. And I'm just curious too, like, I mean, that's a reality as well. Is that something that you've had personal experience with or is that just something that comes through because of where you live? I'm curious where that piece of it came from. You know, I'm not really sure how that came into being because it, it happened sort of late in the story, you know, because for me, the, the story really was about how each one of these people was going to find their way out of their their particular circumstance or predicament. Yeah. How are they going to yeah. move forward? How are they going to have the best life they, they can have despite the recent developments of, of um, and so nothing like that has happened here. We haven't had a, you know, a pesticide conflict of that nature. Um, but I, I suppose it was on my mind because I am a backyard beekeeper. And so I, yeah. I was getting into bees at the time and just becoming more aware of how, um, you know, forget about the commercial orchards, which are all around us, but, um, anybody who has a guard, you know, gardens and who has a lawn, you can go buy stuff at the grocery store. That's absolutely terrible for pollinators yeah, and children yeah. and puppies and, you know, and the like. And so it just, it became an easy, it, they, it was an easy, it was an interest, but it was also an easy villain. You know, I could, yeah, I could yeah. on a yeah. big commercial industrial complex. And since then I found out so much more about how our orchards operate here um, I was surprised to learn how dependent even the the Hood River Valley orchards are on on commercial bees. Yeah. So when they're when they're bloom and uh, orchards are in bloom, they hire beekeepers to come in um, with their truckload of bees to do the pollination. And because of that, they are all very aware of how pesticides can hurt bees. And but they have to use pesticides because yeah. we live in this yeah. giant country with this huge food system. And so it's this fine yeah. balance. Yeah. yeah. So I think I know the answer to this question, but bees also become the central part of this story. You know, they're the sort of the conceit around which the relationships are formed and the, you know, the, the action happens and stuff. And it sounds like you have personal experience. Was that before or after you started writing the book? I got bees about two years before I started writing the book. And, um, and I am not, I'm, I'm, um, I'm an English major. I'm not sciencey. I'm, <laughs> yes, yeah, I know. Yeah, we do all right. <laughs> yeah, we do, we do. But, but I, I've always, I guess I'm a, I'm a biology wannabe. I, I'm yeah, so intrigued, yeah. but I never, you know, so this was kind of a way in this backyard hobby. And the more I learned, the more fascinated I became. So when I started writing the story, Jacob came first and then, and then, and then here's Alice kind of on the same errand that I was. She's coming yeah. back to Portland with her bees in the truck and I was going to the farm to pick them up in my car. Yeah. But I thought, oh, this is great because um, it gives them something to talk about yeah. and it gives, yeah. it gives them a way to get to know each other. And, and yeah. just like when, when the way it's, it's fun to get to know people when you're doing a, a job together, it's the same yeah. with the characters yeah. they reveal That's themselves great. to each other and to the reader. So what have, what, tell me about a little bit about your bees and and what some of the fun things or things that you've learned um i have three hives right now and i started out as a complete novice and made all the dumb mistakes that you can make um i'll, I'll tell you a couple let's see um checking on your bees at night <laughs> not, not they don't sleep and it, uh, uh, they don't like bright white lights. Uh, so I did that the first, the first year. I also, um, when you, when you harvest honey, you take the frames out of the honey right. super and brush the bees off and then, and then you go take them away and, yeah. and, and, um, process them. And the first time I did that, I was so concerned about making sure that all the bees were out of the container that I was taking them away, taking the frames away in that I decided to leave the top cracked so that they could get out. 
but then what happened was that they all poured in there trying to get the honey back. So I created this like mayhem in my front yard. Um, since then hey, I've learned- lady, give us our honey. <laughs> I've learned so much. And actually just today I got notification from Oregon State University Extension Service that I passed my master beekeeping apprentice exam. Yeah. So got a little certificate in the mail. That's um, exciting. Maybe yeah. not as high of a score as Jake though. No, he was perfect. He was, he was <laughs> perfect. But they're they're just so much fun to watch, and they do amazing things that you. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll do. I, I want a couple more examples. Um, sure. Um, they well the the bee waggle, uh, so a forager goes and looks for a good nectar source, and then comes back to tell everybody else where it is, and communicates that through a dance that has been studied by scientists. Yeah. And they've determined that they, it's the, the direction they go, the intensity of the waggle, how much they spin tells the other bees, the location to the sun, the angle they need to fly out of the hive and how great the source is. That's mind blowing in and of itself. Yeah, but then when yeah. you add on top of that, they're doing the bee waggle in the dark. So they're learning it all with just by feeling each other. They're just, they're yeah. amazing creatures. Yeah. Yeah. I love bees. <laughs> so, you know, you could talk about bees all day. I don't, I mean, we don't have, I mean, yeah. I don't have honeybees in my yard, but we have lots of native bees. I mean, we do, we have the honeybees come through obviously as well, but we also have lots of native bees and yeah, that's really that's fun great. too. So yeah, all the different kinds. I had never realized really before, cause I'm a, I'm also a biology wannabe. I'm a nonfiction, uh, writer and I do mostly science writing for kids oh, so okay. so it's been fun to you know to jump in and out of a lot of different topics and bees has been one of them various times and just the staggering number of different kinds you know when when you come into it you think oh there's honeybees and there's bumblebees and there's wasps of various sorts and and then then you learn no oh, there's a lot more than that and yeah so that's so been many. very fun yeah. Do you, are you familiar with the Pacific Northwest Bumblebee Atlas? Yes. yes. Yeah. So that's, I got yeah. involved with yeah. that as well. And there's just, yeah, because it, everything that honeybee, people always ask me, what can we do for the honeybees? What, what, what kind of shape are they yeah. in? And I like to talk about how native pollinators are in the same boat. So everything yes. you're doing yeah. help honeybees is helping native pollinators. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because, you know, the honeybees are, are a really important part of our agricultural system. But as far as your backyard garden, you know, the native bees are just as much of a part of that as, as the honeybees are. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. I can totally get on my soapbox about bees. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so I would, I, I think the last question I usually ask people is, are, are you working on anything new are you is do you have something else I know this was like a, you've written memoir and nonfiction quite a lot and and so this was your first novel so I'm curious how the experience went and whether you're gonna jump back in and do something different or um it was really fun it was a it, I got lucky that it came together uh, the way it did and I just loved it so much um you you're a writer as well you know how how great it can feel when it's going yes. well yeah and 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 makes all the and how lousy it feels when it's not going yes how lousy it feels when it's not and uh and somehow you keep doing it so uh i i am i'm working on another um uh novel right now that i hope will be in some shape it's uh to show to, to my agent soon Yay. um and I, and I also had kind of a fun experience unexpected surprise um my memoir, How to Be a Sister, came out in 2010, which is, you know, dinosaur years by now. Yeah, no, I know. But my publisher has kept it in print all this time, and the audio book just sold, and I finished recording it oh, last week. Yay. It oh, that's in the, exciting. In the fall, yeah, and that was really fun to just see, like, that's after fabulous. all these years, it's still, yeah. um, and, and since then, you know, 2010 is, such a long time ago yeah, yeah. in the digital age um podcasts and audiobooks have become so popular so it was really fun to get to go you know see yeah. record well that. and I don't know I mean that we always try to throw I always manage to throw in a little like publishing trivia in because you know a lot of people in the audience don't necessarily know how that's all works I mean most of the time a book isn't 
Yeah, I mean, lots of there's a lot of books that stay in print for a long time, right? But, but it still is. But out of the you know hundreds of books that come out every week, the percentage that would still be in print, you know, twelve years later is is not really high. So that's actually super super. Yeah, feel that it still is, and that there's an audio. That's super exciting. Yeah, it, thank you. Um, it, they're a wonderful press. They're an independent press called The Experiment. I love all the stuff they produce. They do that whole series. The if you work with kids, you probably know uh, Tristan Gooley's books. I'm looking at them over here. The Lost Art of Reading Nature Signs, The Secret World of Weather. Oh, that whole I series. I um, I bet I'm guessing I would recognize them, but yeah, yeah. They, but they, um, yeah. where are they located? In New York. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's very cool. Well, that's exciting. And you said you actually got to do the recording. I did. Yeah. I had to audition, which was really funny. That's <laughs> but, great. But I get it. Like they have their marketing. Yeah. No, I mean, I want to make no, sure I wasn't awful, yeah. but um, it was really fun and, and interesting also to revisit the story. I hadn't reread it in probably 10 years. And so it was interesting to yeah. go back and yeah. read the whole thing. That was it hard because that I mean that one was also very deeply personal like even yeah it was a novel so it was hard and kind it of took me by surprise at times and it's I was it's recording was very impersonal the the audio tech guy was great but he wasn't you know I didn't know him and we weren't looking at each other but we'd get to certain points and I'd be like okay now I'm gonna cry so we <laughs> we got to hold for a minute here you know yeah it was definitely yeah. um uh pretty moving and I just seen my sister so it was fun it all felt really really fresh and also far uh wonderful to see how far we've come the two of us because I yeah, wrote that yeah. in my late 30s when I just moved back to the northwest and was trying to reconnect with her and now I just feel so like such a wonderful connection to her she's in Spokane um, Yay. so yeah it was good oh that's great oh congratulations that's exciting all right. Well, I am out of questions, but if you had anything else you wanted to share, that would be lovely. I don't know if you have any events you're going to be doing coming up or anything that you want people to know about. Thank you for asking. Um, I don't have anything um, uh, online happening anytime soon, but I do have a, I'm going to be in Cannon Beach on September 24th Ooh, in the library nice. in person, which, Yay! you know, that's <laughs> far yeah. between so and yeah. also Cannon Beach yeah <laughs> yeah I know I know and I love it in the fall um yeah. but I do um uh I do a lot of book clubs that's been a really nice yeah. outcome yeah. Zoom. So anybody who sees this wants me to come to their their discussion group they can find me on eileengarvin.com there's a little invite me okay to oh good all right and I've got to meet people from all over um I've had two book clubs from Vancouver Washington um but people from all over the That's world lovely. actually yeah um, and I'm guessing do. that some of them came into the store because there were several people in the like a little cluster that came in looking for it so oh, good well, that's what that. I'm guessing yeah. that that we're looking for. Well, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Everybody, just to let you know, um, this will all be up on the YouTube page later tonight, and we'll send out an email letting people know. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Good night. Bye.